All right. Welcome, everyone, to our Saturday evening weekly setup here with Silk and Sonder. I saw a couple folks said this was their first time joining us live. So welcome. Um, we love to have our our Sonder fam here with us. And tonight we are going to work on setting up our final week of April, believe it or not, right? We're going into that home stretch of April. So my name is Maya and I am coming to you from Denver, Colorado, where today it was about 30 degrees and we had snow. <laughs> where um, like, I think it was last week, we probably had several days in the 80s. So it's definitely been a roller coaster of weather. It's a little chilly, but um, it's been a great day so far. So I've seen lots of people looking forward to lots of fun things um, that they've got coming up in the week. So the way that, um, yes, Amber Snow, um, which is very common in Colorado in April and May, honestly, and sometimes even in June. So the only month you're usually safe from snow is um, July and probably August um, maybe sep well, first part of September. Otherwise, you never know. And it almost always snows on Mother's Day here in the morning. I don't know. It's um we just we just get our snow and then it usually melts away pretty quick. So so we can we can deal with it. So we have a couple different types of socials. This is a social where we um work on setting up some things in your journal. We also have socials where we specifically answer some of the different um, prompts, the journal prompts, right? So different kinds of things. We have coloring socials. Um, we have lots of different fun events. So let me pop over here just a few for housekeeping things. Um, the first thing I do want to mention is when you put in the chat that you make sure you change your chat to everyone instead of sometimes it will default back to where it says um, host and panelist. So you want to make sure that you flip it to everyone so everyone can see unless you specifically only want me and my um, co-host here tonight. My stage manager is Jennifer O. Oh, she's coming to you from Texas. There she is. Um, you might be able to see or you might not depending on your settings, but she will be helping me keep an eye on the chat. Um, if you have any questions or maybe not sure what page we're doing or what's happening or need me to go back a slide, um, you can always kind of put things in there. The other housekeeping, um, we just kind of talk a little bit about community guidelines. We try to be a very uh, supportive and positive environment for folks, right? So we just ask that you're kind and courteous to yourself and others, um, respecting folks' privacy, no hate speech or bullying. If you have any customer care types of questions, like haven't gotten your journal yet, or a question about maybe a credit or something like that, those you will... Um, send an email to hello at silkandsonder.com. Stacy is asking about the May socials. They have not been posted to Eventbrite yet. My guess is that will be very, very soon. They will be coming. Don't worry. Um, they're not in there yet, I know, but we've got lots of them coming up. So don't, don't panic. They will be there soon. Um, so those will be there. Um, and also like to remind folks that Sonder socials are a tool to really help elevate your emotional health through the power of community, but ultimately you are responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. So if we're ever working on something um, maybe that isn't resonating with you or you, you're not you're not feeling it, don't do it, right? You can always kind of take a break. You could just listen to the music. You can color. You can work on a different part of your journal. But this really is here for you. It's that you time. And we're always so happy that you're able to spend, block out that hour and put that in there. And I see folks, I know a lot of you are looking for those socials. They usually are um, posted. They'll be, like I said, they should be hopefully maybe Monday or Tuesday. And we'll make sure to post something um, in Sonder Club to remind folks like, hey, the socials are live for me um, in there so that you don't miss out on anything, right? So as you know, this is our last week diving into that theme of vibrance, the state of being full of energy and life. And I know some people have really been embracing this theme. I've been very excited with it. It's been very fun kind of thinking about ways to make yourself feel vibrant. I really do kind of think of diamonds and shining and that kind of thing, which is why I had the Rihanna song here in the opening. Been listening to that a lot this month and just really kind of thinking of that state. I've also heard of some folks saying that they're struggling a little bit with this theme, right? They're not, maybe they don't really feel vibrant themselves. They're not sure how to feel vibrant. And I think what's important with all of our monthly themes is the more uncomfortable 
you are with a theme, it almost means that's the more you need to kind of dig into that. What does that mean? Why are you not feeling it? What is, what is happening with you? Not that it's a bad thing, right? It's at the, and like Jennifer's saying, these themes help us grow. They really help us kind of dig in and kind of see how things are going. But you know, it's what the nice thing is, it's only for a month and we'll switch to a new theme in May. So you've got one week left of vibrance, which I'm still pretty excited about the whole idea of vibrance. So here's our agenda for tonight. We're going to work on a vibrance mind map our last week. So with the weekly setups, we kind of give you a little bit of time to dig a little bit deeper into those themes and how it relates to your life. We're going to do our rosebud thorn where we look back um, at our last week. And then we're going to dig into those pieces, those weekly setup pieces um, that are on page 52 and 53, right? And I have these two cute little cartoons. I like to use these to remind folks of a couple things. The first one says, there's room for you here just as you are. We are here for you if things are going well, if you're having some successes you want to celebrate, if you, things are um, just amazing, you want to talk about maybe you got a new job or a promotion in a new relationship, um, you know, in, any of these amazing things, we are here for you, right? We, we want to know about that. We want to celebrate with you. Conversely, if things aren't going so well for you, right? Maybe you've suffered um, a breakup. Maybe you've been sick. I saw some folks talking about that they had been sick. Um, this last week, maybe you lost your job. Maybe you have a significant other who's ill or a family member who's ill, right? We are here for you as well. We are here to support you. We are here to send our good thoughts to you, send our, send those healing vibes, those, those, that family, right? And we're here to kind of, and we want to hear about it. So don't ever think that you can't post a, a sad thing or you can't post a glad thing, right? We, we want to know. And there's room for you here as you are right now. The other one, the way you feel matters and no emotion you feel is bad or unworthy. Nobody can tell us what emotion we should be feeling for anything, right? So your emotions are your emotions, 100% and feel those emotions, right? And so I really like these little, this is the artist is the latest Kate um, and she has lots of cute little um, fun drawings that you can kind of find in her websites um, and those kinds of things, her Instagram account. So let's jump into this vibrance mind map. So um, if you've been with us and this is week four, you already have this started somewhere. Sometimes people like to do this on the definition page where we have the definition of vibrance. Sometimes people like to do this on a blank page. Some people like to do this in the scratch pad section of their weekly setup, wherever we could do this on scratch paper, anything that goes well for you. So on this last weekend, we are going to look at events. What events do you like to attend or want to attend to make you feel vibrant? Bucket list places welcome. So week one, we talked about flow state and living a vibrant life. Um, Georgia, yes, this month is going really fast. Week two, we talked about cultural activities that make you feel vibrant. Last week, we talked about places that make you feel vibrant. And this time this week, we're going to talk about events. So I will show you mine. Um, for this month, I drew a little diamond. Um, and I've been putting my each week in each little facet there. And so for this week, I I stuck to bucket list things, right? Things that I have on my bucket list that I haven't done. Events that would make me feel vibrant. So the first one is here in Colorado, here in Denver, we have a hotel called the Brown Palace. Very, very fancy hotel, very old hotel. Um, and they do a high tea, especially they have a very fancy one around Christmas time and everybody gets all dressed up and it's very, very fancy. Um, so that's kind of one of my, I feel like I would feel very vibrant if I got all fancy and dressed up and um, went and had high tea at the Brown Palace. Another one that's on my bucket list is going on the red carpet, going to a movie premiere. I, I don't necessarily care which movie it is. Well, maybe I do, but I just think that would be super fun. Um, another one would be spending Mardi Gras in New Orleans. I've been to New Orleans, but it hasn't, I think it was like at the tail end of Mardi Gras. So I haven't actually been there during that. So I think that would be um, or could be very fun and help with the vibrance. And then my last one is New Year's Eve in Times Square. I've always wanted to be able to do that, although I hear horror stories sometimes. So maybe I don't, maybe it's just, <laughs> maybe it's just in my mind, it would be vibrant. But those are kind of my ideas, those bucket list places, those bucket list events that would make me feel um, very vibrant, 
right? So I'm going to give you just a few minutes. I'm going to play a little music. Let us know what are those events that would make you feel vibrant. So feel free to put those in the chat um, and we'll check back in here with you in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So many fun ideas. I love um, just everyone kind of coming up with these fun, different um, things that they're doing. Going to see the eclipse, I think, would super be fun. We went up to, was it in Nebraska several years ago? It wasn't, I think it was a total, we went up for the total eclipse. That was pretty fun. I will say it was not super fun um, driving home with all the gajillion people that had gone up there. It took us a really long time to get home. So just so you know, if you go to watch a total solar eclipse somewhere, you may want to make sure that you stay in that area for a day or so, so you're not having to fight with folks um, going back. So I saw things like running in a half marathon, um, going to a fiber festival, the big fiber festival in New York, Rhinebeck is always, I, I hear is always amazing. Um, someone's going to a mocktail um, drink tasting party. That sounds super fun. Um, gatherings at, um, at friend's home where you get to get cozy and have deep conversations. Ooh, VIP tour of Disneyland and the Disney archives. Oh, so jealous. That sounds amazing. Um, girlfriend's lunch, concerts, dancing in the park, 
walking the strip at Las Vegas in the evening. Um, it doesn't have to be bucket list. It could be things that you've already done, places you've already gone, um, that, that you've definitely, those events that you have attended um, that make you feel vibrant. But I think it's kind of fun sometimes to do because we've been kind of sticking in more of the things that you've done, places you've been. So this one can be fun for a, a bucket list, but it doesn't have to be, right? Again, it's totally what you want to make it. So awesome job, everyone. And so hopefully if you've been with us or even if you haven't, you can see what those other um, three areas were, those other three weeks, and you can certainly go and fill those in um, to check. And you can always watch previous weeks, um, uh, the setups, the weekly setups on the YouTube channel. And Jennifer will give you that link at the end of our social where you can go and watch some if you want to dig a little bit deeper. So there's our four weeks of vibrance um, for areas to kind of dig into. So now let's switch over to our rose bud thorn. And this is always a nice time to really reflect on this last week and think about kind of what we did, what went well, what um, what didn't go so well. So this is on page 50. Um, if you if you are using your um, April journal and you do that at the end of the week, sometimes people like to do the rosebud thorn in the next week, um, but so totally up to you. Or some people like to just do it on scratch paper or somewhere else in the journal. Absolutely fine. So my rose for this week actually was this morning. We got up early. It was local record store day. And so the um, the local record stores all had a lot of really limited edition special pressing um, records from different artists. And so we got up early, even though it was really cold and went and got in line at 730 in the morning. Um, and then um, we uh, got our records. And so that was awesome. So that was definitely the rose. Um, the bud is, I know that at some point we're going to be working in our backyard, uh, even though today is, is cold and snowy, but I know that that's coming. So definitely looking forward to that. And then thorn is something that's a challenge. Um, maybe something that didn't go so well this week. So I did put constantly changing weather conditions. I'm used to it, but, um, it is a little bit of a thorn, right? Because I really wanted to get in the backyard this weekend and work. So think about your rose, the highlight for your week, the thing that made you happy, the thing that made you smile, the thing that was really fun. The bud is an emerging opportunity, something coming up. Maybe it's a trip you're taking or going to a movie or you have a concert or something kind of coming up that you're looking forward to. And that thorn is a challenge, something that is a little frustrating, um, maybe something that needs a little a little time, a little work to go through. So fill those in, feel free to share with us um, anything that you want, your rose, your bud, your thorn, or all three. And we'll check back in here in just a moment. Thank you. 
thank you so much for sharing those rose, bud, and thorns from the week. I think um, I saw a few people said it, it, sometimes it's hard for them to think of their rose. And remember, this doesn't have to be anything that's huge or amazing. It could be that you saw a robin, right? Or you heard your favorite song on the radio, just something that kind of made you smile. I like to suggest sometimes maybe going back through your um, picture roll on your phone um, just to kind of see some, maybe it's something fun that you took a picture of. Oh, she started a new book, love starting a new book. Um, so, and then, and the bud does, again, doesn't have to be something huge, right? It can be something, um, you know, that you're kind of looking forward to. It could be the fact that May starts on a Monday this year. And I love when months start on a Monday because it makes my journal so nice and clean and tidy, right? So I don't have that like half a week in one month, half a week in another month. Um, that could be a bud that you're looking forward to, right? So let's hop on a little bit further now and we can get into that weekly planner because we want to make sure that you have some time to set up page 52 and 53. So the first one we're going to think about is that this week I want to feel on page 52. So how do you want to feel? How do you want to approach the week? What's your intention? How do you want to show up right for the week? So I put this little flower because I was kind of, I, I thought this kind of, summed up some of the vibrant ideas, but may you grow so tall and bright, so brave and vibrant that when others see you standing, they think you are a sunflower. So maybe this week I want to feel like a sunflower, tall and bright and vibrant and brave, right? So here's some examples of different things that other people have put. Again, you could put words, you could put a picture, you could put stickers. Um, how do you want to feel? How do you want to kind of go into this next week? And I'll kind of switch back and forth between this one and this one. This is the um, emotions, the feeling wheel. So maybe something that you can, if you need a word, um, looking for something you know, the, how you want to feel going into this week, you can pick something from there. So feel free to share with us how you want to feel, how you want to show up for the week, because you might inspire someone else with a fun word as well. So again, play a little song and then I'll check right back in. Goodness, look at all those amazing words that folks are coming up with. Hopeful, excited. I love the, um, Teresa's found a super cute new sticker with a tall giraffe she's going to put in there. Proud, perky, on task. Um, proud, another proud, daring, confident, loved. Um, Brenda wants to feel on top of her game. I love that. That's super fun. Like what a great way to put that in there. So hold that hold that thought on your mind, right? As we go through the rest of this, really think about like, okay, if I want to feel like this, when I go to come up with these three major goals, when I think of my to-do list, when I think of my habits and activities, all my planning that's on page 53, 
How am I going to connect that all back to that feeling? How is that going to lead me to realize and actualize that feeling for the week, right? So hang on to that thought and, and keep, keep looking at that, right? So first, we're going to work on our major three goals. I like to do the goals first because you kind of set these overarching goals. They're not necessarily tasks. They're just things that you want to um, complete, these accomplishing your goals. And I have a cute little picture of the corgi because it's got a little corgi butt and you can never go wrong with the corgi butt. Those little dogs are so cute. So accomplish your goals one step at a time, right? If you want to climb up those stairs, you got one foot in front of the other each each step, Right. So lots of different ways to approach this when you think of goals. You could go back to your intentions for the month, right? Um, Your monthly habit tracker. What are some goals that you want to do that are going to help you finish this month strong? Maybe you're going to set those goals through the lens of vibrance, right? Thinking about vibrant goals. Um, You could maybe do no goals where saying things like no alcohol, no doom scrolling, no more than a certain amount of time on social media, no impulse spending, no takeout meals, right? So kind of thinking in that um, vein. You can also look at previous weeks or journals to see what outstanding goals you haven't had a chance to accomplish yet that you want to kind of put front and center for this week. You can frame your goals around maybe a single personal challenge for the week. We have people who do fitness challenges, um, cleaning or decluttering challenges, self-care challenge, um, soup or salad, right? Challenge where it's like, I'm going to have a different kind of soup every day, or I'm going to have a different kind of salad. I'm going to pack my lunch, right? So those kinds of challenges. You can also see some examples from other fellow Sonder family. Um, so things like weekly major three goals, declutter, organize, and clean. The one in the middle, um, witness beauty and inspiration, Right. And Shannon's saying, like, never know how to quantify um, what's the difference between the goal versus the to do's. Jennifer kind of popped in a nice little thing there in the chat. The difference between a goal and a to do list is a goal kind of gets to your why. Right. And the to do list are those activities that get you there. So I think of the one that's kind of in the middle witness beauty and inspiration. That's a goal. So when I go and do my to do's, what are some things that I can do that will help me realize that goal? Organize. Um, I think it says inform and inspire my team. Again, nice big goal. What are some to-dos that I can come up with that'll help me realize that? Um, The one kind of down the bottom, prioritize sleep, make a movement plan, increase effort at work, allow my younger self to be seen and loved. The one up in the top right hand, integrate new weekly goals into existing ones. Give myself tons of grace along the way. Enjoy time with family, share gratitude with others, rest, right? So think of these goals Again, as these um, kind of your why, this big thing that you want to have accomplished over the week, and then your to-dos really are those little tiny steps that will help you get to that. So we'll do the to-dos next, but you can also work on those at the same time, right? So, so think about that. And actually what I'll do is let's work on both of them at the same time. So when we go to our to-dos, to-dos, you can see some different people have done like a ta-da bingo, where when they do some things, they made a little bingo board. Some people have wants and needs in two different columns, right? Things they want to do, things they need to do. The ever popular Eisenhower matrix, right? Where they have things that are important and urgent, not important and urgent. Um, So things you want to do, things you want to delegate, things you want to decide, things you want to delete. Um, And remember, the results you want, those goals, will um, rarely come without a process of gradual steps toward it first, right? So as you're thinking of these goals, you can also fill in the to-do list. So I'm going to give you some time to do both of these. I'm going to flip back and forth between the different slides so that you can kind of see some of these different examples. Feel free to share with us kind of what you're thinking of as you fill these out. Also remember, with the goals, you can only have one goal, right? So honestly, what I am doing this week, because I find myself, I keep adding things to my list, things I want to do, things I want to accomplish. So I actually added, um, so my one goal is simplify to two, I said, see above. And for goal three, I said, see above, right? So I'm trying, I'm this, my goal for this week is to simplify, Right. Simplify to amplify. So simplify some things. So my to do list, I'm going to see if I can um, say no to some things. Right. Get rid of some things. 
right? You can have one goal. You can have three goals. You can have five goals. You can say, you know what? I am not going to set any goals for this week. Uh, my goal, maybe my goal is just to um, get through the week, right? And that's a goal. And then you can kind of come up with those to-dos to help you figure out what that looks like. It looks different every week for me, right? Sometimes I can be a real gung-ho, lots of goals. And then other times like this week, I'm like, okay, I'm going to simplify to amplify. I'm going to try to simplify some things, not do all the things and move through. All right. So spend some time. Let us know in the chat. I'll keep cycling through these different slides so you can see. It's also a good idea sometimes to um, take a screenshot if you're on your computer, or you can take a picture with your phone um, if you want to kind of go back and see these. Let us know what you're putting in there, and then we'll check on you here in just a few moments.
So I love how there's so many fabulous ideas in the chat to kind of help folks who are like, I'm really kind of struggling with this. What's a goal? What's a to do? Right. I feel. And then also getting into like the habits and activities too, right? You're like, oh, they all seem to tie together. So um, Fernanda had a really great um, idea. Now I got to scroll back up and see if I can find it. Um, having the goal stem from your word of the week. So her word is proud. So closing the rings on her Apple watch will make her feel proud of herself. Um, and so will the other two goals on my list, right? So the goal is proud. She has two um, feeling is proud. The goals that she has um, will help her feel proud. And so to close the rings on the Apple watch, she might put a to do is to um, go for a walk for 30 minutes or, you know, do some sort of other activity to help close the, the exercise activity rings. Um, yeah. So great idea how you kind of see and see how they all kind of work together. And if you're not getting it and you're still like, Oh, I'm not sure. Right. See how it works for you this week. Kind of play with some different things. And like I said, some people they're like, I'm not even going to do, um, goals. I'm just going to work on some to do's, right. Cause that's what kind of needs to, to be in there. Um, so lots of different ways to do that. Um, I saw some folks, Oh, Teresa had a good idea writing down the three goals in different colors and then use that same color in her to do's that helped achieve the goal. Right. So, um, nice way to kind of write those in different colors. I have used my goals. And then in my to do's, I made a bingo, um, of, three things each for each goal that I would do that would help me with my goal. So lots of fun ideas for different ways um, to kind of approach that, how to kind of go through that. And it also ties into the bottom, which is the habits and activities, right? So a lot of folks will ask, how is this habit activity here different from the beginning of the, you know, the, the big wheel, right? In the, the monthly ones. So these are really habits and activities that you want to focus on for the week. And there are things that you don't necessarily want to do every single day, right? You just want to do maybe a few days during the week. So I showed this um, last week, or maybe that was the week before that I found that are kind of fun ideas and thinking about energy givers. I've heard a lot of folks saying like they're low energy, struggling with energy. So this one has energy givers, which are things like sunshine, fresh air, meditation, hydration, nature, movement, rest, reading, music, healthy food. I also posted this graphic in Sonder Club um, several days ago. I don't remember how long ago it was, um, but this is kind of a fun one. Think of these things, right? Like if you're feeling low energy, right? And maybe this week you wanted to feel energized and your goal is to do things that give me more energy. Here are some things you could potentially put in those habits that will kind of help you um, bring that, bring that feeling of energy. Um, so here's some examples of things that other folks have done. You do not have to fill in every single one of these lines, right? You can have one habit that you want to focus on. You see people have some different numbers in there. Um, the one in the middle, they have dishes seven times during the week, laundry three times, daily ritual two times, right? Um, or maybe the one on the bottom, they just hydrate is one of their habits and activities. And they're just going to kind of check those off. There's one um, bottom left is the, what we call the five, four, three, two, one method. So the first one, here's things I want to do five times this week, four times, three times, two times, and just once, right? Um, again, kind of different kinds of things, reading a book, um, clearing the dishes. You don't have to fill in every line. And if you're already feeling overwhelmed, you've got your goals, you've got your to-dos, you're like, it's going to be too much, right? Don't fill it out. You can, you can color in, you can, maybe one of your habits is to make your bed every morning. Maybe one of your habits is to drink a glass of water when you get up in the morning and you want to do that um, three times during the week, right? So kind of think of what are some things, again, helping with the to-dos, helping with those goals, helping with that feeling, see how you can tie those back in to see how you would want to um, move forward and how, again, it will help you to plan out during the week. Some people, they don't, they can't think of these like right off the bat because it is Saturday and you're thinking like, I'm not sure what I've got to do this week. But when you get into the office on Monday or you get into work on Monday, you start to find some things, Ooh, I need to write down. I need to check in with my boss two times a week. Um, yeah, Shannon's saying maybe do a habit of doing a daily T chart of the, what I can control and what I can't control during the week. That's a great 
habit. And you wouldn't necessarily have to do it seven times. Maybe you just want to say, my goal is to maybe do this three times during the week, is to make a T-chart of things that happened that I could control or I had control over and things where I didn't have control during the day. So kind of keep tracking of that. So think about that. Let us know in the chat what kinds of things you like to put in the habit activity tracker. I often put things like um, pack my lunch for work instead of going out. And I'll say four times during the week, I give myself a day grace in case I want to go out. Oftentimes I end up doing it all five days. And then I'm like, woohoo, I went over my um, goal or things like I want to get um, 6,000 steps or I want to... Um, take my lunch break away from my desk or, you know, different kinds of things like that. So let us know what you're thinking. We'll check back in here in just a few minutes and um, see how everything's going. Right. Lots of great ideas for different things that folks are going to put in there for habits. I also want to encourage you to be careful about putting in um, five brand new things that have not been habits, right? Because that can be a little overwhelming at times. So again, sometimes I'll put things that I know I'm, I'm pretty solid at doing. This um, last week I had finished a book one time and I did, I finished a book that I have has actually been, I've been kind of reading off and on um, since probably November um, and I finished it. Yay. So it was like, woo, I finished it, got to color in my little bubble and, and felt good. So a lot of people put things like reading um, for 30 minutes, working on my journal prompts. Um, don't hit the snooze button, Lori. I love that. Yes. No snooze. <laughs> um, getting to bed by nine, no screens, right. Finishing a book. So these are all, and again, these are I try to make these very specific to the week, right? So not necessarily things that are maybe overarching for the month, but things that are very specific for the week. Some people, 
um, like to put, I know Jennifer sometimes will put on hers, look at monthly habit tracker or fill in monthly habit tracker, right? To remind herself to go back to that because sometimes we can be um, uh, remiss in going back. We spend all that time creating it and then, and then we forget to look back. So let's flip over. And um, so now I feel like you've got a good solid start, right? To think about your week. You've got how you want to feel. You've got your three goals, your to-dos, your habits and activities. So this page I always feel like is, again, kind of a supplemental thing. Maybe it's some little things I need to do that help me with all of that big plan that I made for the week. So the first thing we have, and I'm going to go over... Um, the first three, the meal plan, the mind, body, health plan, and the shopping list all at once so that you can fill in as needed. These are often sections that folks repurpose because they're like, oh, I don't really need this. I'm not sure what I need. So I'll show you some ideas for that. The meal plan is one that we get uh, the most frequent requests for what else can I do with this, right? Like I don't plan my meals. I don't track my food. Absolutely fine. It works lovely for tracking food or planning food. Um, so, but if you feel like you don't need that, here's a lot of different ideas for different things that people do. Maybe keeping track of their daily affirmations, um, exercise tracker, cleaning plan, gratitude log. I've used it as a packing list before. Um, what I'm going to wear if I'm going on a trip, what I need to make sure that I have for each one of those days. Um, maybe I'm planning out um, some self-care that I want to do for the week. Maybe it's times that you felt like you were in a flow state. What were you doing? What are some things that put you in that kind of in your groove, right? Things that you did. Maybe it was, um, you know, maybe you want to make sure that you have lunch with a friend or something like that. So kind of keeping track of all these fun, different things. And I'll keep, I'll cycle through these different ones. So again, you'll have these while we, while we work on this. Um, then the mind body health plan, again, lots of folks do some different things with that. You can keep track of different things that you want to do to help your mind and your body throughout the week. So maybe it's things like thinking about, um, different types of rest. So it's like emotional, sensory, spiritual, social, mental, creative, and physical. So kind of thinking of these different kinds of things that they could do each day, making a chore bingo. Um, maybe this person used it as a meal plan, but planning dinners because they didn't use the meal plan itself. They just wanted to plan dinner. So they kind of, um, came up with that. Oh, and some folks are in the chat kind of talking about having some issues coming up with meal plans, but solve them by looking up meal plans on livingwell.com. You can find different example, um, Mediterranean plans, plant-based, diabetes friendly. That's great. That is a great idea. If you're kind of like, um, I never realized as an adult, how much time I would have to spend thinking what's for dinner. <laughs> so that's a great idea to kind of spend some time planning that. Um, other folks, I liked the one for the mind, body health, where they said something I did well this week and some ways I loved others this week, right? So just two little things that they were kind of keeping track in there. The other person, they choose one. They were very ambitious and came up with three different things each day that they could do, um, that would help with their mind or body. And then they had to pick one for each day. Um, somebody has like the meatless Monday, TV free Tuesday, walking Wednesday, right? Those fun kind of alliterations of things, themes that they want to do as they go through um, the week. And then the shopping list, again, is another fun place where you can kind of figure out, make it work for you for the week. So I'll show you, remember the energy gave energy givers picture I showed you? So what I did last week in my shopping list is I made an energy givers bingo, so I put things, I put those, those um, energy givers, they had sunshine, music, reading, water, rest, nature, meditation, good food, movement. I put those in a bingo. Um, and that was kind of fun to be like, okay, how can I get these energy givers in on a daily basis? People use it for packing lists, use it for a fun quote. Um, yes, I would definitely say getting your hair done, um, getting a um, pedicure, um, going to the dentist, right? Going to the doctor. Uh, taking your supplements, any of those kinds of things can go into that shopping list. And you can see people use this for all different things. Sometimes I leave it blank and it's just a scratch pad for the week as I go through. So look at those, um, look at these different ideas, work on these sections. Um, some of them you might be like, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this section. That's okay, right? Just 
kind of still thinking about it. Um, or if you're like, oh, I always like to do this in my mind, body, health plan section. Let us know kind of what you're doing um, and we'll play a little song and then we'll check back in here in just a moment. So believe it or not, <laughs> we have rapidly approached the end of our hour. I did pop in those recipes because a lot of people were really enjoying some of the different um, recipes that run this meal plan. I think this person gets those meal kits from HelloFresh, but I just Googled the name of it, um, the crispy kicking cayenne chicken, um, and you can get the recipes are free on their website. So you don't actually have to get their meal kits to get their recipes. So feel free to Google, um, Jennifer, you need to Google the getting figgy with it chicken. I bet that recipe is on there too. So kind of fun, um, 
some fun ideas for some recipes. So the last part that's on this little section is the I am loving. Some people like to fill it out at the beginning of the week. Some people like to fill it out at the end. Um, for me this week, I um, it's kind of from last week, but uh, I like to read this gal. Um, her name is Suzanne. And I think um, Jennifer will pop the link to her website. Yes. Into the chat. Um, she does the, um, she does these fun little blog posts and she does these fun things. So she had this post about stealing an hour of time. Right. And so she talked about how important it was. Things were just like, there was a lot of things going on. She was just feeling like she needed some downtime. And so she rearranged some things, canceled some things, and then stole an hour. She does these cute little drawings, stole an hour of time. Right. So if you go onto her link, there's a lot of, there's some stuff that um, on the blog post that there's like a subscribe part to, but this was from a free one too. So you can kind of go in in that, but I thought that was kind of a fun little idea of stealing some time, steal some time for yourself. So hopefully Hopefully this hour has been stealing a little time for yourself, stealing that time for you to plan for the week so that you can have a really strong week, strong finish to the end of the month. Let us know kind of how things are going. Feel free to post any of your pictures that um, from your journal that you feel comfortable with into Sonder Club. Everyone loves the ideas. You can see that's where we got a lot of the different um, uh, examples, right? Real life examples from our Sonder fam. Um, so share, feel free to share those. It's great to kind of see the different kinds of things that um, people do. Some are super creative. Uh, mine are usually pretty basic. Um, oh, Ted Lasso, I haven't seen this season yet because I don't have Apple TV. I'm trying to figure out when I can, the best time is to get it so I can kind of binge this season of Ted Lasso, but definitely love that. Um, so let us know um, how things went. Um, for you. Um, you can share your feedback about the journal, uh, about the survey. No, share your feedback about the social. My brain is going too fast. Um, let us know if maybe there's some different times that work for you. Just always let us know time zones, right? If you say it would be better if we could have more of these at 7 p.m. Eastern time, make sure you let us know when that is. Um, we do still have the refer a friend um, promotion going on where if they sign up, you get $10, they get $10. And I think Jennifer popped into the chat. There it is, the link for the YouTube event. So we put up the different um, socials. We put those up. Sometimes the music is taken out. Sometimes it's not. Um, and the chat is not there, but save that link. As Jennifer's saying, click on that and save that link somewhere. Um, and we always repeat it at every social so that you can see that. And I know often we put it into Sonder Club as well. So you can kind of share with us. Um, so, so you can spend some time watching some of the other socials. If there's anything you missed or you just wanted a quick re review. Also, Jennifer popped in the link for Eventbrite. Like I said, I'm hoping that those socials uh, for May will be posted sometime during the week. We'll let you know. Um, when those come up. So have a fabulous rest of your weekend. We still have the rest of Saturday night. Um, if you're, I'm in mountain time zone. So I got a little bit of time and um, Sunday, you're all set up for the week. Should be feeling really good about how things are going. You might want to spend a little more time kind of filling in some of the notes that you took tonight. I hope you have a fabulous week, fabulous end of April, and I will see you again soon. Thank you all so much for being with us here tonight. 